Welcome to Beaufort County this week. Today is Friday, October 11th, and this week, Greenville native and civil rights icon Jesse Jackson celebrated his 83rd birthday. I'm Matt Golden, and here are your top stories presented by Beaufort County TV. Bluffton asked its residents to give feedback to help with future floods. A new restaurant in Beaufort has plenty of promotions for its grand opening, and the SCHSL has made adjustments to the fall high school sports seasons in the wake of Hurricane Helene. All this and more coming up on Beaufort County this week. Make sure to check out Festive Beaufort, your exclusive ticket to all the excitement happening across Beaufort County. Join us as we explore vibrant events that bring our community together. From local flavors at seafood festivals to creativity at art shows, Festive Beaufort celebrates the heart and soul of our community. Don't miss the stories behind these events that make Beaufort County shine. Tune in and discover why Beaufort County is the place for every occasion. Festive Beaufort is where the spirit of our community comes alive. Find episodes of Festive Beaufort on BCTV, on the BCTV YouTube channel, and on the BCTV app. From Bluffton today, as the hurricane season continues to bring severe weather to the low country, the town of Bluffton wants to remind its citizens to complete a flood survey to help the town plan for future storms. Following the flooding left behind by Tropical Storm Debbie in Bluffton, there has been other storms including Hurricane Helene which have affected the town. The town of Bluffton is reminding its residents to share their experiences with flooding to help the town with its predictive models and future planning and projects. The town of Bluffton wants to remind citizens to complete the flood survey to help the town plan. Town officials said the surveys and public meetings are a component of research which the town and South Carolina Sea Grant Consortium are conducting to enhance preventative flood measures, inform policy, and plan for possible future improvements to the town's stormwater infrastructure such as drains, culverts, and retention ponds. From the Post and Courier, Beaufort's newest restaurant has an enticing offer to commemorate its grand opening. Chicken Salad Chick will give its first 100 customers free chicken salad for the year. The fast casual chicken salad restaurant opens at 3351 Roberts Malls Parkway on October 15th with a number of specials and giveaways on October 15th. The first 100 customers can get free chicken salad for a year. The first customer in line will receive one large quick chick of chicken salad per week for a year. The next 99 guests in line will receive one large quick chick of chicken salad per month for a year. On October 16th, the first 100 customers to purchase a chick meal will receive a free chicken salad chick canvas tote bag. On October 17th, the first 100 customers to purchase a chick meal will receive a free chick meal or small quick chick on their next visit. On October 18th, you can buy two large quick chicks and get one free, plus the first 50 customers to purchase three quick chicks will receive a free tote bag. And on October 19th, the first 100 customers to purchase a chick meal will receive a free chicken salad chick stadium cup. The cup can be used through October 31st for a free drink when you purchase a chick meal. Beaufort's Chicken Salad Chick is owned and operated by Julie Bevel and Michelle Singleton. The business partners opened their first Chicken Salad Chick in Greenville in 2013. From the Island Packet, South Carolina's high school football season will be one week longer because of the effects of Hurricane Helene. The South Carolina High School League's executive committee voted 9-4 Tuesday to extend the regular season one week. As part of the plan, the state football playoffs will not be shortened or affected. Another plan to reduce the playoffs from five to four weeks was voted down on Tuesday. In addition to football changes, one week was added to the boys and girls volleyball seasons and the full playoffs remain intact. The middle school volleyball season was extended to October 28th. A motion passed 13-1 to keep competitive cheer schedule. The same with postseason qualifying events changed from 2-1. to one. The dates for cross country championships remain the same, but runners have to compete in just one race and not two before state qualifiers. 
Girls golf and swimming championships remain the same, but swimmers will have three extra days to submit qualifying times. Girls tennis will have one week added to the season, and the full playoffs will stay the same. In the football plan, each athletic region will determine how they proceed with makeup games and determine which games will not be made up. Regions will also have to figure out a formula for selecting its playoff teams amid the changes. The football season will now end November 8th, and the playoffs start on November 15th. The SCHSL football championships were scheduled to be held on December 5th through the 7th at South Carolina State University. They will now be held December 12th through the 14th. There is some concern that SC State could have staffing issue with hosting if its college's football team is in the Celebration Bowl that weekend, but SCHSL Commissioner Jerome Singleton said he spoke with South Carolina State officials on Tuesday afternoon, and they assured him the university could fully staff the event. With the pushing back of the state championships, the Touchstone Energy Cooperatives Bowl All-Star Game will now be played a week later at Myrtle Beach's Doug Shaw Stadium. It will be the same day as the NCSC Shrine Bowl in Spartanburg, which will kick off at 1 p.m. And now here are some events to get you out and about this weekend. Tomorrow morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., it is the Flying Frog 5K. If you still have time to register today, you can head over to runsignup.com. But if you don't want to run and you just want to enjoy some of the great scenery from the Buford Executive Airport, tune in to BCTV where we will be broadcasting the event with great commentary and you can see all the race results. The broadcast will kick off around 7.30 a.m. Also this weekend is Jeep Island 2024. Today is the meet and greet, October 11th from 5 to 7 p.m. at the Rowing and Sailing Center. The main event is tomorrow from 12 to 3 at Low Country Celebration Park. Following that, there will be an after party from 4 to 9 at Lincoln and South Brewing Company. A 2009 Wrangler Unlimited X with 97,800 miles will be raffled. You do not need to be present to win. 850 tickets so far have been sold, and it's $50 per ticket. For more information, please visit jeepisland.org. And as always, there's great movie fun at the Highway 21 Drive-In Theater. Friday and Saturday, you can catch a double feature on Screen 1. At 7.30 p.m., it's Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, rated PG-13. Following that, at 9.20, it's Bagman, rated PG-13. On Sunday, at 7.30, you can catch a single showing of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Friday and Saturday on screen 2 at 7.30, you can catch Joker, Foley I Do, rated R. And then at 10, you can watch Terrifier 3, which is not rated. On Sunday on screen 2 at 7.30, you can get that single showing of Joker, Fully I Do. And on screen 3, Friday and Saturday at 7.30, it's The Wild Robot, rated PG, followed by Monster Summer, rated PG-13 at 9.15. On Sunday at 7.30, it'll be The Wild Robot. Hopefully some of these events piqued your interest, and maybe I'll see you out and about this weekend. Hopefully you'll have a good and safe weekend in Beaufort County. As always, we ask you to check out our friends at Beaufort County Animal Services where you can find courtesy posts about missing pets, found pets, and pets that you can adopt. We want to thank everyone who has donated to help support Western North Carolina. We have received a very gracious donation of dry cat food. We have one truck full. We are still in need of wet or canned kitten, adult cat, puppy, and adult dog food dry puppy and adult dog food, cat litter, and feeding bowls. We also have been receiving a lot of requests from the public to take in animals from North Carolina and other areas affected by Hurricane Helene due to the social media posts they are seeing online. There are national groups like the ASBCA, Bissell Foundation, HSUS, 
Code 3 that handle and assist animal shelters in dire need during natural disasters. We know these groups are on the ground because we have been there. We are in communication with these groups and if help is needed they will reach out to us. We understand how heartbreaking the story is coming out of these areas but we also have to go through the proper channels to ensure the safety of these animals as well as the public. If you choose to rescue an animal from the affected areas please make this decision with the mindset of keeping the animal no matter what. They have already been through enough. The last thing they need is to be given to another shelter they are unfamiliar with. Thanks for tuning in to Beaufort County this week. This podcast is a production of BCTV. For more information on BCTV, please go to BeaufortCounty.tv. Matt Golden, Production Specialist. Chloe G, Social Media Specialist. Vincent Verga, Director. All rights reserved.